Hello, this is a presentation for the course project of the Computer Architecture course done by teams Amdals Wanders. And the title of the project is An Analysis of Tage and LTH Branch Predictors. Let us first understand why branch predictors are important in computer architecture. They have a critical role in achieving effective performance because even a 1% improvement in prediction accuracy can save millions of cycles in large programs, thereby improving latency and performance of the program to a very large extent. How can we make more efficient branch predictors? So we should understand that branches often repeat their outcomes and therefore history of a branch repeats itself. So if we can use multiple history lengths of a branch, we can capture correlations from both remote branch outcomes and the recent history of the branch. And using this, we can compute the final prediction of a branch outcome using multiple isolated predictor components. Now we look at the TH predictor. So TH predictor uses a base bimodal predictor uh, and Further, it uses stacked components. So these stacked components are uh, basically history tables, uh, which are indexed using variable history lengths. And uh, there are tags stored in them. So the predictions are made as follows. Whenever there is a particular branch address, we first try to index and see if there is a tag hit in any of the components. So for the component with the highest branch history length, we choose the prediction made by that. And if there is, uh, is no component where the tag hit will be uh, there, then we use the prediction made by the base bimodal predictor. Uh, this is the flowchart corresponding to what we do when we make a prediction. So when we make a prediction and if the prediction is correct, we simply update the prediction counter. And if it is not, uh, then we use a tag component or then we find a tag component higher than this particular tag component, which made this particular prediction. And in that case, uh, we choose that particular entry where uh, the useful counter is zero. So if there is no such act component available in that case, we decrement u counters for all of them. In this case, no new entry is allocated in any of the component. If there is exactly one, then we allocate that. And if there is uh, more than one, then we choose based on the probability. So uh, for the smaller j value, uh, the probability is kept higher. Now let us look at the LTH predictor. This predictor builds on TH by the use of a loop predictor. So it combines an X component H predictor with a Y entry loop predictor. And the loops are detected based on repeated access to the tables which are used for branch prediction. So the loop predictor component identifies regular loops with constant numbers of iterations. And it provides a global prediction when the loop has been executed three times successively or more times with the same number of iterations. The replacement policy of a, of a, of a prediction is based on the age of the prediction. Why do we use loop prediction? This is because it can capture regular loop behaviors which stage cannot using very limited storage and it can also predict the number of times a loop will iterate. This allows several basic blocks to be prefetched from the memory accurately and reduces the number of instruction cache and memory requests, thereby increasing the performance and reducing latency of the application quite a lot. We implemented the TH and the LTH branch predictors in Samsung. The code can be found here in our repository. Uh, here we have instructions for cloning and building Chamson and running our code. So if we see the code uh, for LTH and TH, there are several parameters which can be varied and results can be observed. And they have to be tuned to an optimum. So these would be the geometric history lens that we are considering, the table sizes that we are considering, and the tag roots which we are considering. So we varied this and we try to observe the results on what provided an optimal result for all, all server traces. So a natural comparison is with bimodal because it is the baseline. And we also compared with hash per septum because it is one of the good predictors available in Chamson. And we see that in almost all of the server traces, our page and LTH were performing much better than the baseline bimodal. And in, even in some cases, the, the improvement is over 70%. And in servers, traces 3, 4, and 9, page and LTH even outperform hashed for septum. So here we vary the number of components for the TH predictor and we also vary the TH table size. TH table size is the size of entire table by summing across the sizes of all components. So naturally, if we increase the table size, essentially we are also increasing the maximum history length and we are capturing a richer history. So increasing table size would obviously improve the accuracy of prediction and average MKP, MPKI would go down. And we see that an increasing components from 4 to 8 and 8 to 12, there is a significant improvement in the 
in the accuracy and mispredictions go down a lot. However, when we increase from 12 components to 16 components, there is not much of a difference. It becomes to stagnate after that. Similarly, we compared for LTH, we calculated the average MPKI over five server traces. And we see that on increasing table size, obviously, there is a significant improvement in accuracy. And on increasing components from 4 to 12, there is also good improvement in accuracy. But when we increase number of components from 12 to 16, it becomes to stagnate and there is not much of a difference. The next comparison we look at is that of TH and LTH. On increasing the table size, we see that the MPKI decreases significantly. Within each table size, we see that LTH performs better than TH because of the uh, loop prediction abilities of LTH. And we see that 16 component performs better than 8 component. Next, we look at what happens when we vary the history lengths. We see that on initially increasing the history lengths, the MPKI decreases and afterwards it starts increasing marginally. This marginal increase is probably because server traces that we are using in our experiments don't require very long histories for accurate predictions. If we start considering past events that don't affect this prediction, that would lead to mispredictions. What happens when we vary the tag width? We see that on increasing the tag width, the MPKI initially decreases and then it starts stagnating. Initially, for very small tag sizes, we would have a lot of mispredictions because of false tag matches. But after a point, these become redundant and the mispredictions aren't really affected after further increasing the tag width.